Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to talk about 2019 contribution limits for your IRAs. We're going to talk about traditional IRAs. We're going to talk about Roth IRAs. Coming up next on the Firefighter Financial Toolbox. Join me. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're talking about contribution limits for IRAs. We're gonna talk about traditionals, we're gonna talk about Ross, we're gonna talk about the contribution limits for people up to 50 and 50 and over, and we're gonna talk about deductibility of your traditional IRAs. At the irs.gov website, we're looking at IRA contribution limits for 2019. As you can see, for 2019, your total contribution to all of your traditional and Roth IRAs cannot be more than $6,000. However, if you're 50 or older, you get an extra $1,000 catch-up contribution, making your total uh, $7,000. Uh, that's up from last year when it was only $5,500 and $6,500 respectively. The, IRS, the IRA contribution limit does not apply to anything that you do for a rollover from a other plan. So the first thing I'll say is let's look at the contribution amounts you can make for a Roth, because this is my favorite. So let's go to Roth. So this is talking about our contributions and the limits to when we can and can't contribute to them. So let's say we see that if we're married and we make less than a modified adjusted gross income of $193,000, so that means we're married filing jointly and your spouse and yourself make a combined less than $193,000, we can contribute the full amount or $6,000 each. If we're married filing separately, don't do this guys for taxes, it's really bad. You have a reduced amount up to $10,000 and if you have over $10,000, you can't make a Roth contribution at all. Now, if you're single or you file head of household, or married filing separately and you did not live with your spouse at any time during the year. The limit goes up to, the limit starts at 122000 and it completely phases out at 137000 Now, to figure out what that means, we're going to go through and do, read this and get through some math. First thing you want to do is start with the amount of your modified gross income. Then we're going to subtract, let's say we're doing mild married filing jointly. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 193,000 from our AGI. Then we're going to divide the result of that by $10,000 because we're filing a joint return, right? Then we're going to multiply the maximum contribution limit before the reduction to figure out. Then we're going to subtract that amount from our maximum contribution limit and that's going to give the amount we can contribute. So let's stop right there and look at some math. We're going to start out with an AGI of $199,000. Now we're going to subtract from that $193,000, which is the minimal, the start of the phase out range. That gives us a total of $6,000. We divide that number by $10,000, which is the gap in deductibility. That will give us 0 0.6. We then multiply that by 6,000, which is a maximal contribution, and that gives us 3,600. We then need to take 3,600 away from 6,000, which is our total contribution, and we get a total of $2,400, which is our maximal contribution for that year. Okay, you guys, now we're going to look at the deduction limits if we decide we want to do a traditional IRA. Now, the the contribution limits are the same, 6000 and 7000 if you're over 50. But what about if you have a work plan that you do or do not uh, contribute to? So these rules apply if you have a work plan, even if you don't contribute. So same sort of thing. If your modified gross income is... 64000 or less, and you're single or head of household, you can contribute a full, uh, the full limit and get a full deduction on the $6,000. Now, the phase-out limit starts at 64000 and goes to 74000 
If you make more than 74000 you can still make a contribution, but you cannot take a tax deduction on it. If you're married, fine jointly. If you make $103,000 or less, you can contribute the full amount of the traditional IRA. If you make more than $103,000, but less than $123,000, notice that's a $20,000 gap there, you can make a partial deduction as the phase-out can do. Now, if you make over $123,000, you can make a contribution, but you cannot take a tax deduction on that. And once again, if you're married filing separately, the same rules. You can take a partial deduction up to $10,000, and $10,000 or more, you get no deduction. So let's go back to our math. It's the same as before. Okay, let's say we have a single firefighter who makes $70,000, so he's filing head of household. He's going to subtract the minimal, which is $64,000 from our range, and that gives him $6,000. We're then going to divide that by $10,000, which is the range for the, single, for the single or head of household, and that gives us .6. Now we're going to multiply .6 times $6,000, which is our maximal contribution. And that's going to give us a total of $3,600. Now we need to take that $3,600 and subtract it from $6,000, which is our maximal contribution, and that gives us $2,400, which is our maximum deductible contribution for a single or head of household contributing to a deductible IRA. We covered some stuff here. We talked about contribution limits for 2019 that are 6000 if you're up to 49 years old and an extra $1,000 for either, up to 7000 if you're 50 or over. Uh, we talked about uh, the phase-out limits for contributing to a Roth IRA. Now, there are ways around that, but that's for another video. We also talked about deductibility limits for a traditional IRA. Uh, if, sometimes people like that. Uh, to get that extra tax savings up front, you can take that uh, deduction off your taxes at the end of the year. Now, I realize we're past the April 15th deadline for filing for 2018. Uh, so this is a new year, 2019. Uh, there's certainly things to think about. Remember that we've talked about if you work and your wife or your spouse does not work, remember that you can, as long as you've made enough income, to cover the contributions for both you and your spouse. You can make both of those contributions, uh, and they are equal. Uh, we talked about the fact that if you're married and you're filing separately, uh, you don't get very good tax uh, treatment for that. So think about that, you guys. Anyway, I uh, hope you got some benefit out of this. If you, had, if you enjoyed it, give me a like. I want you to subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment in the bottom. Tell me if I sounded like I knew what I was talking about or if I just was blowing air. And I hope to see you again real soon. All right. Take care. Thanks a lot.